I am Jenny Joseph. I am a midwife and an activist. I fight for families. I fight for you. Perinatal means the time around birth and includes before pregnancy, during pregnancy, labor and delivery, postpartum and any time in between. The perinatal pause provides the time to reflect on the root causes of where we are, where we've been, and to create strategies for how we can transform maternity care in America. Well, hello, and thank you so much for joining us today. This is the Perinatal Pause podcast, and the Perinatal Pause is something that I think we all need to take a moment and do. Let's pause, let's take a break, let's slow it down a minute, and let's think. Because in perinatal work, in the perinatal field, perinatal meaning around pregnancy, birth, postpartum, and in between of babies, in that perinatal world, we got a lot going on. Here in the United States, especially, we have a wretched and miserable problem, and that is that people are dying during that perinatal period, worse than in any other developed country in the world. And black women and indigenous native women are dying at three to four times the rate of white women. And that is a problem. So today I'm here to have a conversation with some lovely, lovely folk who are working on the perinatal front line. And I want to welcome them into the podcast. Um, Shay, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, y'all. I'm Shay, uh, and I actually live in Rhode Island. I am the perinatal safe spot development lead uh, for Common Sense Childbirth, uh, Jenny's uh, National Perinatal Task Force, supporting about 192 safe spots and other members of the task force. And Rihanna. Hi, I'm Brianna. I live in Ocala, Florida, and I am the membership coordinator for the National Perinatal Task Force. Well, thank you both for joining me today. Can you share a little bit more about what the Perinatal Task Force does? Uh, so Perinatal Task Force is workforce development for Black and Brown perinatal workers, doulas, lactation professionals, midwives, um, anyone that's touching pregnant families during that perinatal period, we're supporting them so they can support their communities. Yeah. I, one of the things that has really, I think, propelled the work of the National Perinatal Task Force has been the fact that so many people who are out there on the ground have come together and built the strength of this network. And um, for me, you know, in, when we formed it, and it's been since 2012, I believe we started this work, we have seen people coming literally out of the woodwork saying, I'm over here, I'm doing this work. And I wanted to talk today about how that them being seen is pivotal to the work. Brianna, do you have any thoughts on that piece? Like when we say we see you, we really do. Yeah, we we really do cuz I think it's important to have that acknowledgement like you know that you are doing the work in your community and because uh it's not really shown or broadcast as much especially in like the the brown and people of color community that like it kind of feels like it's shadowed by the other things that are going on especially when watching the news and hearing all the stories of um the maternal health <laughs> mm -hmm. it's just insane yeah yeah so it's uh it's discouraging and that's why um the task force is just so important because it really creates that community and that support that's like not there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know when we formed the basic um ways that we were going to operate this task force we were really intentional about trying to build in the support for the supporters, like you said, Shay. Like we had the thought that the important part here was centering those supporters, just like those supporters center mother, baby, center families, center communities. Like this was an opportunity for us to center the actual providers of that support. 
So thinking about that, when I came up with this episode of the path, the, the episode of the podcast, I felt like we could really talk about it from a perspective of we see you. I know when we work with mothers and families and pregnant people, we center them immediately. So it's that kind of finding a tool to help us to be effective in our work, but also to help others to continue to be sustained in their work. Absolutely. And that that sustainability, it can be anywhere between fi- financial s- sustainability. It can be emotional sustainability is big. That is the heart of what we do. Can see, we see you, you might be working alone, but you're not alone. There's more of us out here. So we're going to seek you out. Mm-hmm. We're going to support you. We're going to check in. Um, and we're going to doula the doula. We're going to midwife that midwife um, because a lot of the times we're having burnout. We're having people leave the work that don't want to because their heart's in it. They just have to, to support themselves, their families. And we don't want to see that. We want to see you get to the goals that you want to and continue this work. Yep. Um, Brianna, do you have any thoughts or you know anecdotes about not being seen because I felt as a midwife, I came here in 1989, got off a plane and thought I'd get a job in Florida doing what I had been doing for a very long time. And I was horribly, horribly surprised to find out that one, people didn't hardly know what a midwife was. And two, they certainly weren't going to be hiring me. And I went for many years just feeling so unseen, so unappreciated, so irrelevant even to the perinatal landscape in the States. Have you got any story or thoughts around, you know, that piece of when you were starting out in your work, in your perinatal work, and would you share? Yeah, I definitely felt that hundred percent when I first started, um, three years ago, after I finished my training, I was like, oh, okay, wow. Like I'm gonna be a doula. I'm gonna support, uh, like my community. I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna educate people. And then I kind of was hit with like, okay, like I'm finding myself explaining what a doula is like, I'm really realizing like, wow, like people don't have the education that I thought they did around like birth and reproductive and even like postpartum, like we've kind of just lost that. Mm -hmm. So it was like really hard for me coming in as a new doula because I was like, I want to do this work so bad, but I'm like, I don't. Like, I, I don't know where to start. And then when I was starting, I was like, am I, like, I didn't feel that appreciation. Um, I didn't really have, like, a lot of, like, peer support. Mm-hmm. So I was just kind of like, yeah, I was just kind of, like, lost, like, within it. And I kind of was, like, would be doubting myself, like, am I really, like, this a good duo? <laughs> like, you know, that confidence level was, like, really, like, iffy. Um, and it really wasn't until I started seeking community within like other birth workers is when I found like that like support because they were like you know filling up my cup you Mm -hmm. know telling me those affirmations letting me know like you are a good birth worker like you are doing so much for these families and it's so appreciative like I see you and being seen by someone else it feels really good especially from like your clients too like like oh my gosh like I would have not done this without you and not like in an ego way like of like receiving that information but just in a way of like okay like a confirmation that's it yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Shay what about your story exactly um my story was I would I was seeing the folks um being doulas being midwives in my community and not having the help and I just started off being you know the errand girl that was getting the runoffs from the printers at Staples and getting breakfast and dropping it at the houses and and hospitals until eventually they rallied together and I became a birth worker myself but I've always been supporting birth workers first primarily as not taking births myself but helping them through their births Um, and just extending that that care in that philosophy of my doula work Mm. of focusing on the supporters just bringing that nationally is just my heart work of course but as far as not being seen I was also the doula that didn't do births where do I fit in 
And right. because right. task force is all hands on deck, everyone's welcome. We need all hands on deck to do this work. I was able to find my spot, maybe not as a safe spot, maybe as an amplifier in some spaces, as an igniter in other spaces, which are also um, positions of membership within the task force that I could still fit in and still do my heart work in my own way. So I was still being seen um, by jumping into task force. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting, isn't it? Because there are so many areas and disciplines within the perinatal. So, I mean, if we help folk who might be wondering, well, what are they all, or even understanding what we're saying, let's go, let, make a run through here. So we've got, for example, we've already talked about doulas, and we've also, also talked about midwives. So with doulas, doulas support families through the childbearing experience and provide emotional support and physical support and advocacy, information, education, but they don't do medical tasks or midwifery tasks. They don't deliver the baby. They don't measure your blood pressure. They keep um, in the other realm of support for pregnant um, labor and delivery, postpartum. Midwives, on the other hand, attend families in the same way through that same course of time but midwives provide medical care and midwifery care um, to do the actual part of clinical support for pregnancy clinical support during labor and delivery and clinical support for postpartum but there are so many other players in the perinatal world right so Brianna like let's go through some more let's keep listing all of these folk who are on the ground doing perinatal work a uh, lactation consultant. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, trying to think. But I know with some people, there's the lactation educators who are, um, you know, trained to find and help you troubleshoot and refer to lactation consultants. There's also the um the educators, childbirth educators, mm -hmm. who are teaching you about birthing processes, teaching you about your pregnancy teaching you about the postpartum and the baby care, parenting educators, teaching everybody about all these needs and going forward. Because once the baby's out, that just begins, right? This is where we really need some help and support. Shay, what else have we got on our list of perinatal supporters? Uh, I know there's community health workers uh -huh. that can get that wraparound care taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, there are obstetricians that yes. can follow a more patient-centered approach mm -hmm. um they're out there i know yes. they're out there they need to get their friends on board yes. um i know there's also there are certain offices like there are certain wick offices that are more pregnancy friendly mm -hmm. um there are you know there are certain churches certain yes. uh first Health ladies ministries. that mm -hmm. exactly um domestic violence shelters that's right. That are really focused on making the perinatal period safe for mm -hmm. the community. Um, it can be a grocery store, restaurant, chiropractors, yes. Yes. yoga instructors. Yoga. Yep. I think the family practice doctors are such an untapped resource in the United States. Mm. Many family practice doctors were trained to be able to do maternity care but they don't do it very often. And they sometimes, you know, have some obstacles to being able to, especially in hospital, um, you know, deliver or do cesareans and so on. But some family practice doctors have those skill sets. Nurse practitioners, let's not forget the nurse practitioners. There are way more nurse practitioners than there are nurse midwives or licensed midwives, direct entry midwives. Do you see all of a sudden, as we start thinking it through, that list expands. And people have a part, but they may play a certain area, pregnancy, or a certain area, postpartum, but they each have intersectional roles within this continuum of care for pregnant, delivering, and postpartum people. And this is the key. And also interconceptional, because between babies, you're still in a perinatal period, right? Mm -hmm. Postpartum, how long is postpartum? It could be forever, right? So... Let's just make sure we count that. So when we look at the numbers of vast ranges of people and disciplines, professionals that are doing some work in a perinatal way, we realized they all need support. 
And the biggest reason I think that that support is important is because um, of those of us that see the light and understand what's happening in plain sight, we have a burden. We have um, a moral injury. We have an additional stressor on top of everything else we're doing. We have to perhaps uh, address the inherent racism and classism and sexism, the discrimination that's baked in to our maternal care system. We have a, a sense of frustration and helplessness, maybe powerlessness around the situation that many of our families are enduring, facing, or even succumbing. Because let's not forget what we're talking about here. In the United States, we're talking about life and death. So how could something as simple as stating and holding, we see you, for those providers, wherever they have fallen, wherever they are in their discipline, for those providers to know, we recognize and understand what you're up against. We see your struggle. We see your pain. We see your concern. We see your burnout. We see you. Mm -hmm. Do you see how, and do you agree with me that this is how we contribute in this way to saving lives? Absolutely. I think it's a, a huge contribution because it's it's something given back to the to the stronghold so that your your perinatal safe spot is your stronghold in the community. How do we fortify that stronghold? Because there are so many detriments that are trying to knock us down. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's any way to build that back up, make that stronger then we'll be able to take whatever they throw at us and they can't keep us down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I see you nodding there, Brianna. I mean, it's it, the concept of having to, you know, create this way of being, even though it's a little convoluted, it's also very simple. So it's actually very cost-effective anybody can do it right um it comes from that almost from that um principle of where there's a will there's a way it comes from being innovative and thinking outside the box because what drives me totally insane and has me horrendously overwhelmed and upset is the idea that we don't know why we've got maternal mortality yes we do we know full well and that piece of that is what, that's what drives me. Like we do know we have solutions. We can employ, deploy those solutions immediately. We have more than enough money to do what we need to do. We just have to have the political will and the ability to agree that this cannot stand. Right. When I look at it from the perspective of how do we get into action and how do we create sustainable actions and solutions so that we can lift everyone at the same time and we can prevail? It comes back down to these simple things. And what's interesting is we do this organically for mother, baby, families, right. without thinking. We know immediately when somebody asks for support or help, aid or guidance, boom, right there, center that person and get to work. That's how we roll. Exactly. And with the, the safe spots, I love it because it's not a, a governing of community folks. Mm -hmm. It's a framework that we offer to help, like you said, simplify the work for them so that there's longevity in the work, so that there's consistency in the work, and so that they have someone that they can call on myself, call on Brianna, and we can help them move through the work and see different perspectives. And there's no lone wolves. Like you told me when I first started here, no more lone wolves. Let's not do that anymore, mm -hmm. you know? And so we, first of all, we recognize that you're there and we acknowledge you, we thank you. Mm -hmm. This work is thankless. Our families suffer while we are trying to support, support and save other families. 
our lifestyle, our livelihoods suffer while we are trying to support and sustain other families. So we see you and we put our framework together on purpose to maintain that we continually see you. So let's talk a little bit about the um, overarching tenets of the perinatal task force. We have our three areas, collective care, collective leadership, and workforce development. Let's talk a little bit about those three and how they apply here when we put that support out in the world for these folk on the ground. So I think the collective care is really where the ICU theme sits. The collective care is, I have eyes on you. I can lay hands on you in a hug embrace, even mm -hmm. if through the internet. Mm -hmm. um, and I understand you, whether it's culturally or in, within the work, because we're both doulas or we're both uh, community health workers. I understand you. Um, and that collective care of, yes, you need rest. Yes, it's okay to rest. And the work can lay on my shoulders while you rest because we're doing it together. So that collective care um, is really where we'll see you or we'll find you because we know that you're we'll out there. You. <laughs> I know Brianna will find you. Our membership right. coordinator is on fire. That's right. <laughs> The yeah. collective leadership is just selecting those folks that want to be the voice. Um, not everyone likes loves the spotlight. I acknowledge that. But those that want to be the voice, that want to be the advocates and go to the state level, legislation level, and um, being in partnership with them in order to get them there and support them while they do it, uh, to move those two together as workforce development builds the ultimate collective power, which is what we're trying to do, build that collective power so that we can make the permanent and long changes we need to end this maternal mortality rates. Yes, absolutely. We need these disparities gone. They are outrageous. They are egregious. They are human rights violations in plain sight, and it just cannot stand. We're not having it. We're not having it. I really appreciate that outline um, of how we do what we do. I think we've talked a lot about why we do what we do. Um, let's talk a little bit as we finish up on how that impacts the families that we serve. Like, Brianna, would you sort of address from the perspective of the families who indirectly receive what it is that we're doing at this task force in terms of supporting the supporters of those families. What do you think and how do you see what we are doing here in this work impacting them? It's so important for people, especially like in that time period to feel safe and to be around people who are safe, who are gonna use the language that they prefer, who are culturally appropriate to what, what their needs are. And the fact that families can seek that out and find those people, those places, those organizations, um, it's just really important. And it changed, it changes everything that's going on with like the maternal like rate, like us doing that work, them finding places, whether it's a midwifery practice, where there's just a doula that's gonna help them navigate the hospital system and advocate for them and teach them how to advocate for themselves. Yes. Like we're 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 creating a change even if it's just a small change, like that seed is going to grow and it's going to flourish and it's going to spread. I agree. I so agree. One of the things that happened for me after that, I told you my story story of arriving in 1989 without any place to land and any clue and any support, you know, what grew out of that was an ability to provide um, midwifery care. I started doing home birth and then moved into birth center births but providing midwifery care by centering families. That's how I learned about the problems in the United States, but also how to solve them. And one of the things that gave us this clue that, you know, you're onto something here was the fact that every family that came through that was marginalized, you know, sadly, whether of color or low income or uninsured or undocumented, whatever the reason that we have put on these, you know, folk a, a, a label, but every family had a full-term baby. Every mother was breastfeeding. 
everybody survived. And this was in those days when it was all about infant mortality and babies, you know, we talked about babies all day long and now we talk about their mothers as well. Thank goodness, huh? But in those early days, it was, you know, black babies are dying disproportionately and there's nothing we can do about it. And they're always premature and every NICU is packed full of black and brown babies. And our mothers weren't experiencing that. And I was like, oh, hold up, there's something here. And it was simply because we weren't delivering these mothers at home. We weren't delivering them in the birth center. Majority of the mothers were going still to the hospital and having babies in the hospital system, but they were thriving in the hospital system. And we have to be real. The majority of American people still deliver their babies in a hospital environment. But there is nothing that juices me up more than seeing a full-term big belly mama coming out of a hospital with a big old chunky baby in her arms at the breast like that's it like it's that simple and that has been consistent since the um 2000s we've been doing this work this way in a midwifery work but we've also seen the growth and thank goodness the development and the scaling of doulas who are equally able to get those results which points out that this is not about the best technology or the best equipment or the longest training. It's about mm -hmm. recognizing that when you center that family, those parents, you are gonna get those results. And so now we are fine tuning, centering the providers for those parents so that they too can thrive because whether we wanna speak about it or not, this work, this world where we are fighting injustice on a daily is also lethal. The blood pressure, the stroke, the diabetes, the everything that comes with carrying this stressful load as a person working in the perinatal sphere is as lethal as the unfortunate disparities that we see in the families that are childbearing in the United States today. It is all intertwined. So I wanna thank you too for joining me and um, having this conversation. We wanna make sure we keep supporting our supporters. We see you, we thank you. We are so grateful for you and we will win. So don't stop, don't get faint. If you wanna find us, get online, perinataltaskforce.com perinataltaskforce.com and of course tune into the perinatal pause where we're going to keep talking we're going to keep going we're going to keep sharing we're going to keep educating and we also want to make sure that you let us know what you want to hear and what topics you want us to cover so again thank you Brianna thank you Shay thank you National Perinatal Task Force for being in the house and we will see you all next time thank you Thank you. Thank you. Stay connected by following us on Instagram at I am Jenny Joseph or visiting our website, www.jennyjoseph.com.